So today's area of mastery is all about setting appointments. And of course, if you're deep on my material, you know that that is one of the 12 competencies that makes a great business is the ability to get in front of more clients on a more consistent and regular basis. So if you're B2B, it's obvious you have to set appointments and get out there and get in front of clients as much as possible. It's amazing to me that the biggest problem in setting appointments is that phone phobia. Here is your daily dose of the Ultimate Sales Machine coming to you from the new edition. Visit ultimatesalesmachine.com to get your copy or multiple copies. I am your host, Amanda Holmes, CEO of Chet Holmes International. What you're about to learn has assisted a quarter of a million businesses to generate billions of dollars, working faster, better, smarter. It's amazing to me that the biggest problem in setting appointments is that phone phobia where you just have people who the phone is so heavy they can't pick it up or they're afraid to go to the phones or that facing rejection is the toughest part of setting appointments. And that's why in my own personal organizations, what we do is we set it up in advance. We train brand new salespeople that they're going to have to call somebody 13 times. And of course, the study that I have in the Business Growth Master Series shows that it's 8.4 attempts to get an appointment, but that's several years old, and I'll bet it's, I'll bet it's gone up 40% or 30% at least because we see it in our own environment, how many times we have to call up a person. You may be even one of them. You're listening, and we may have called you 13 times, 14 times to get you to take the next move with us, whatever that move may be, whether it's a web seminar or talking to one of our coaches or some other kind of situation. What I would do is, if I were you, is I would set it up in advance that whoever is making those phone calls that you just tell them in advance. It's going to take you 13 attempts or 14 attempts to get an appointment with any one of our prospects that we have. You establish who those prospects are. Let's talk B2B straight out first, and then we'll go to B2C. So B2B, business to business, what I would recommend is that you put together a schedule and you plan it in advance. Here's the first thing we're going to send, and then here's the phone call we're going to make. Then here's the second thing we're going to send. Then here's the phone call we're going to make. Then here's the third thing we're going to send. Then here's the phone call we're going to make. Then here's the fourth thing we're going to send, and then here's the phone call we're going to make. And I've had 60 Fortune 500 clients. I got them all myself. They were phone calls that I made. They were outbound cold calls into companies like Morgan Stanley, Wells Fargo, Warner Brothers, McKinsey and Company. It's not a Fortune 500, but they were and probably still are one of the top consulting firms in the world. And I got them as a client, and I did training in there, which is hysterical considering with my educational background, I wouldn't have been able to get hired there as a consultant, but I got a job there as a trainer and cold called my way in and got them as a client. I've had a lot of big law firms. I had Baker & McKinsey, which is the largest law firm in the world. I've had Foley & Lardner. They're a huge law firm as well. Just the biggest companies you can go after, American Express, Citibank. In the banking field, I've had Citibank, Wells Fargo, Bankers Trust when they were huge. That was years ago, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Merrill Lynch, New York Stock Exchange. And the way I would do it is I would go after the client as if it was a fait accompli. This is just going to be a client of mine. I don't care how long it takes or how many calls. And I just started on them. And if you're the CEO of Morgan Stanley, for example, I hit that guy so many times from so many directions, so many different ways on so many days and so constantly that for six months, just every week for six months. And then actually what was interesting is in the sixth month, he called me, his secretary called me and set an appointment for me to go meet with him. So that was amazing. And But you can't count on people to have 
that instinct and that intuitive nature and that I'm going to chase you down and hunt you and go after you every single day until I get you. So what you do is you build all that in advance. You build what's the first thing you send and what's the second thing. And, of course, we have a little thing with the gifts, but I can tell you that we sent out for my book launch, I bought the top 3,000 executives in the country, and we mailed six gifts to them. And then I had a couple of people call after those, and we thought it would be better in this case, and I have discovered that is true, and it might be true for you too, so I'll share this with you, is I have another client where we, after sending four gifts, we found that they were fairly receptive to taking the phone call. They were going after CFOs for large companies, very large publicly traded companies. And after the fourth little gift, and these are very inexpensive gifts, magnifying glass, which cost 23 cents a piece, a Rubik's Cube, we used those two, and they were 40 cents a piece. So the mailers were out the door on a dollar twenty-five, and in their case, they went after let's say five hundred companies. So you're talking about a seven hundred and fifty dollar a month budget for your mailing. That's not a lot, actually. In their case, it was every other week, so it was six weeks worth of budget. And they found after the fourth one, they didn't get any phone calls. I'm just going to warn you all because you're thinking, oh, I'll send those little gifts and hope the world will beat a path to my door. It doesn't work that way. But after the fourth tchotchke sent out to these people, when they called, they took their phone call. So that was huge. And But with my book, we sent out 3,000. And unfortunately, as usual, I have way too many things going on. I've got eight companies that I run. I've got tons of initiatives going on. And the book is this extra thing that... Of course, I did spend time on it and put some dedication into it, but it's not like it was my only thing to focus on. And I personally didn't get to make any phone calls, any outbound phone calls. And from the mailers, we did get a couple of speaking engagements and a couple of appointments. And, of course, it paid for the mailer. In my case, I spent about $60,000 on the mailers. So we bought a list of 3,000. We bought... 18,000 gifts, so 3,000 gifts each. I bought them from China, and to my rude awakening, the shipping was a huge cost in the factor of getting the products over here. And then, of course, I had to hire a mail house. I had to buy a list. We had to clean the list. We had to blah, blah, blah. It was all these things, and there was, of course, staff people who were in charge of that. And But if I personally got to make those phone calls... Or if I hired a top producer, we had some PR people calling after that was a mistake because they weren't Barracuda cold calling hungry salespeople. And we all know as a CEO that this is a hard thing to find. So if you really want to become a master of growing your company, number one focus is finding these superstars, and they're rare. And we're going to have a whole session on that because it's so important to put good talent into every area of your company. But what's even more important is to have the procedures and policies at every level so that no matter who you have, they perform at a high level. I'm working with a company right now. They have about 36 people. They're doing about $50 million. And they have a telemarketing crew that pounds away trying to find people who might be interested in their services right now, purely tactical, only going to the very, very top of the pyramid. And, okay, there's some wisdom in that, meaning you're, you sell grommets and you call up 4,000 companies in a week and say, are you interested in buying grommets this week? Are you, would you like to talk to anybody who sells grommets? And you might get one of that 4,012 people who will go. As a matter of fact, yes, we are interested in buying grommets. Whereas if you have a more strategic approach, which we'll talk about in a moment, you might get from that same list of 4,000, you might get 400 appointments. And it's very possible to do that, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So the first aspect is what's the first thing you're going to send? What's the second thing you're going to send? And as I said, it might be smarter to send four gifts in a row and then call 
and then start calling behind. And, uh, you know, me, I get a speaker's fee of 50000 So from my mailer, which cost me 60000 one speaking fee pretty much paid for almost the entire mailer that we did to 3,000 other executives. And I couldn't tell you how many other places that effort manifested something. There's a ton of other places where that effort will manifest something. So I've been very aggressive, and I'm in a place in my life where clients now come after me. So I'm not out there pushing to get clients, and I, I'm not in that place in my life anymore. But if I was, I can tell you that I'd handpick the clients that I want, and I'd hit them hard and from so many different directions and in so many different ways that within a very short period of time, whoever that prospect is, they get to know exactly who you are. Exactly. They know you. And if let's say you're hard to get to. I'm hard to get to. I'm impossible, actually. You can't get to me because there's no where you can send me anything that it actually comes to me personally. And there is no phone call you can call me where I get screened out because with the virtual world, I have an operation center, and they're in Georgia. I live in California, and there's no phone number where you can get me not at all. And everything is virtual for me. I work out of my house. I work out of my home. I have a private office five steps from my door, and so I go out my my kitchen door, walk across my balcony, and there's my office nestled in the trees. It's about thirty feet off the ground. Beautiful location and setting, and that's where I work. I've had celebrities as clients. I have celebrities as clients. I'm working with Tony Robbins, and I. I'm working with Brian Tracy and these guys we got to by hitting them so many times from so many different ways and so many different places that eventually, I don't care who you are, you get to know who these who someone is who comes after you like that. So first part of it is what's your plan? What are you going to do week one, week two? And then you need documents for every reaction you can get from that prospect. I'm not interested, boom, you've got a document that says, I know you said you're not interested, that can't be true. That must not be right. Because with all the things we can offer you, I cannot believe that you would not be interested. I will try again. I will call you again. I will send you more information. I will be in your face. And they get the message. You are never going away until you get some progress. And we've had people tell me many times, I'm not interested. Uh, Again, I'll mention Morgan Stanley. That guy told me, I'm not interested six months in a row. And then I didn't call them the last week. They called me and set the appointment. So George Zimmer of the Men's Warehouse called me to tell me to stop calling him. And I talked him into an appointment. So there's really no one you can't get to if you're determined and you're pig-headed and you are disciplined, and you're just going to go after them again and again. Now, second part of what you do in order to go after these prospects needs to be focused solely on making an offer that sounds irresistible. When I called up uh, Carl Raker, the chairman of Wells Fargo Bank, I said that I had seven philosophies. And this is early Chet selling. Now we have the 12 competencies. But I had seven philosophies that would double his sales. And he was certain there was nothing that would double his sales. And I was more certain that my philosophies would. And so when two people come together, the one who is the most certain is going to win. Or as I was on my sales meeting yesterday, and we were playing a call, we record 100% of our inbound calls to our virtual call center, and a virtual meaning that we have 100 people working out of their houses and we have a technology that enables us to route calls to homes. This is not anything new today. Blue, big airline, they have basically customer service people now who all work from home. So you may be calling and the woman may be, have a child on the floor playing at her ankles, but she's in a house and they can route to hundreds of people through this service that works like a roam feature in an office. If you had 25 lines in your office and 13 people are on the phone, the 14th person is the one that gets the call. So we have this, and it records 100% of the phone calls. And I'm playing one of the calls from one of the salespeople, 
And basically, the prospect, you could hear it. This guy wanted to be sold. He was open to it. He was saying things like, I know you probably make commission, and it sounded interesting to me, and I probably would attend. It's just I'm not going to sign up right now over the phone. And and the sales rep kept buying his story, and it was obvious to me and to the other sales talent, the high-level executives that I have that work for me, every one of us is going, close this guy already. Close him. He's dying to be closed. And I pointed it out one way, then the other way, then the other way. And what we do is we play those right over the phone, and then you get to hear what the prospect is saying, and you get to hear what the rep is saying. And I'm just telling you, it was amazing how the one with the most passion won, and the salesperson wasn't really that pushy. He he basically acquiesced and respected the guy's desire to get information, quote-unquote, as a way of brushing him off. And he's a high-level executive, runs a multi-million dollar company. He's had the business for 15 years, I think he said. He has some major clients. He's in an airport or something. He was first started off in his car, and I guess he parked his car while he's talking to our rep. 15 minutes this conversation went on. And then he said, I'm in an airport right now, and I don't have my credit card with me. And I'm going liar (laughs) to the sales rep. I'm saying buyers are liars. There's no way this guy who runs a multi-million dollar company doesn't have his wallet with him with a credit card in it, especially if he's in an airport. Give me a break. George Zimmer calls me up to tell me to stop calling him, and I went at this guy so hard so many times from so many different ways, he finally caved. I think it was 11 tries before he said, okay, you got yourself an appointment. And then it was so hard to get him to agree to the appointment, I wrote him a letter and said, look, you've agreed to take the appointment. Now be a mensch. Be open to it. Be excited about it. You have an opportunity here. I've helped all these other companies, and I've listed a bunch of them. And don't be so sure I can't help you. And if you're going to come into that meeting with your arms crossed in a determined attitude not to be helped, then please, by all means, cancel the meeting. But since you've already said it, and since you might have an opportunity to significantly increase your sales, then come to the meeting with an open mind. And he was so friendly. It was unbelievable. He walked in. It was like we were college buddies. He shook my hand. He patted me on the shoulder. He used my name in a very friendly way. He was like, Chet Holmes, how you doing? And uh, you got to go after those guys. You need a plan. You need a way to come back no matter what that person says. You, if you do get them on the phone, the one with the most passion is going to win. Whoever's selling the best that day is going to win. So you should be role-playing the heck out of that. You should be practicing what that rep says. You should be role-playing as that person is trying to turn you down how many different ways you're going to go back at them. And I don't care who you are. I did a manufacturer in England and they were technicians that sold industrial paint. Not exactly a sexy field, guys, and core technicians. There wasn't a salesperson in the bunch that I would hire for any company that I own where we need, quote-unquote, salespeople. These guys were technicians. They knew about paint. They knew how fast paint dried. They knew how to spray paint on. They knew how to... But this is industrial paint. It's used on jets, and when you go to a pay phone and it's got that black, enamel paint on it that's just literally like almost bulletproof that's a much stronger paint you can't even buy this kind of paint in stores it's industrial strength and it does require this expertise in order to know how to apply it to a chair or to a the metal on your briefcase handle or whatever all those little parts and pieces on everything that we buy are all painted somewhere by this industrial paint And these guys were technicians. They were not salespeople. And every week I got on and I role-played with them for 20 weeks and five months. And I let them come at me every way. And then I pitched them this way, pitched them that way. And I got it to, by the end of the five months, there wasn't one of these 55 salespeople that you couldn't get on the phone and a hot seat, which is what we're going to do in a few minutes, And that sales rep could do a really good, solid job 
of going back and trying again and again. And if you're in England and you're listening, I will tell you my stuff works really good there because it's not as competitive of a market. And you might be thinking, yeah, that that can't be true. In America, there's 60 million salespeople, and in England, there's 59 million people. So the total population of people doesn't equal the amount of salespeople that we have in the United States. So you can imagine that naturally, I think there's 3 million businesses in England, and we have 25 million here, and that doesn't count all the little home-based MLMers out there. We have millions more than that. So we have a highly competitive market, and you need this kind of stuff today in order to be effective in the world. So the other part of it is now it's also what you say and what your offer is. So I had the seven philosophies that will double sales. I now have the 12 skills or competencies that make all great executives. Again, I'm not soliciting myself And my pitch has gone from really what I used to be able to do in 22 minutes to now I need two and a half hours. (laughs) But again, I'm not pitching myself anymore, so it's it's I don't really need anything. But I did a program for Ford, and I had to present to all their dealers, and they gave me 45 minutes, and I started with the stadium pitch, where normally that's the in terms of competencies. It's the second competency of all great companies is that they're a strategist and you need your stadium pitch and all that. And again, most of you on this conference call are here because you're deep in our material. And so I don't want to start teaching you stuff that you could learn from the training programs. Not going to do you a service that way. We have to go further on this call. This is about mastery and taking you further. But It's amazing how most companies are incapable of being highly strategic. And so what is it that you could offer that sounds highly compelling that would be very hard to resist? What's the hook? What's the approach? What's your story that you can tell when you get that person on the phone? And when I got Carl Riker on the phone, he was chairman of Wells Fargo, on my way to the meeting because, to my utter shock, he set the appointment for the very next day. And I will tell you that he's he's retired now, but when I went after Wells Fargo, I called him up, and he called me back 10 minutes later. I left no message except my name and phone number. His secretary didn't ask me a single question, didn't scream me whatsoever. I guess you figure who calls the chairman of a $100 billion bank And he just called me back to my shock. And he tried to turn me down the entire conversation. And I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And then he said, how's tomorrow at 3? And this was on a Monday and Tuesday at 3 o'clock. I got in my car a couple hours early and stopped at several Wells Fargo Bank locations on my way down and had many great stories to tell him about that ridiculously tactical experience where not one person even did a decent job at even pitching the bank. It was astonishing to me. But that's the way, that's the retail world, where basically you go in and say, excuse me, I'd like to open a business checking account, and they give you the form. And you're like, can you tell me anything about the bank? And they're like, what do you want to know? They just couldn't even, (laughs) it was really amazing to me that you can't even pitch the bank. How long do you work here? So you must have a plan of what you're going to say. You need a core story. You need a stadium pitch. You need something educational that you can offer that person that is just too tempting or goes down easier or is easier to sell. So I mentioned I have this client that will call 4,000 people, but all 4,000 of them could pretty much use their services. They're using somebody else's services right now. Excuse me. We designed an educational experience where you can call up that prospect and say, hey, I'm going to show you the five biggest mistakes that people in your position make that could potentially cost you a fortune. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a way that's going to save you money, it's going to save you taxes, it's going to 
reduce your stress, it's going to take away your problems, it's going to benefit. And all vague, nothing specific on purpose because you're looking to get an appointment. Do you want to get into a 45-minute discussion about the appointment? If you do, then start to give specifics. If you want to just have a five-minute discussion to get the appointment, then just give mysterious benefit without giving a single detail about what you want to talk about. I've got another client actually listening right now where he has a salesperson who gets into the full-on debate, goes into it, starts to talk about his company and how it functions and what their sales angle is over everybody else's. And so basically he's trying to make the full sale over the phone before they even get the appointment. Where you can get way less appointments by doing that, way less. So you need a pitch that's highly structured. So let's do this. Oh, I want to talk about B2C for a moment. Again, if you want to go after affiliates, the first thing you should do is have something you can offer them. So in my case, I do a famous author series, which is every other week, and most of you are experiencing this, you get a notice from my list, or actually, if you're brand new to our world, you don't get the notice because we wait several months because I don't want you besieged or barraged with too many things from me when you first get involved in our world and when you focused on growing your business and making your business solid. So actually, every other week we do a notice about famous authors that we're going to interview. So when we want to get an author to do something with us, we first start off by offering to do something for them. We call up that author and say, hey, we have a famous author series. And usually on our teleconferences, we can have as much as 2,000 people show up. And we want to interview you. And then we send it out to my entire database, which is in the six-figure range. And we're going to send out full announcement to my entire list and then give the recording to everybody. It's an opportunity, a possibility to get thousands of new fans virtually in a single hour telephone conversation and then that gets us in play and then we have to make a good impression and then we have to do a good job and then we have to get lots of people to show up and then we usually will help them promote something that they're trying to promote whether it's their book or their training program they might have that's complementary to mine or whatever so we on a regular and consistent basis approach these people and offer them something And then in that process, we get to know them. And then our next phone call is, hey, what about us offering something to your database? And we've worked many relationships like that. So if you're looking for affiliates, what can you offer them first or at least dangle in front of them? And that's a really good way. So what we're going to do now is going to do hot seats. And if you're interested in having some red-hot focus on you, and your company hit one one time. And Shante, tell me if you have people raising their hand. Hello? Not at this time. Not at this time. This is your opportunity. Let's have some red-hot focus on you. You are here for CEO Mastery, and I am here to try and help you achieve that, and I want to focus on your company. I want to tune you up, find various ways to help you go further. So I cannot believe that you wouldn't take advantage of this opportunity to get some individualized, personalized focus on your sales process. Let's talk about it. Who are you going after? What is the setup you're doing? What's your approach? What's your pitch? Make every aspect of that thing you're doing. We can tune that up, and then we're recording this. So you'll have me designing what your approach is going to be when you call that CEO. So if you'd like to take that opportunity or that affiliate, then you must hit one one time. That's the point we're at. If you're enjoying the weekly dose of The Ultimate Sales Machine, then you'll love our new community program, The Ultimate Sales Machine Dojo. Because business is more complex, more crowded, more difficult than ever before. 90% of executives believe that we're about to hit a recession. 
So we have to truly avoid the shiny object syndrome. We can't just wing it in our marketing and sales processes anymore. We have to get hyper-focused and do what works during a no-spend economy. So what would be more enjoyable than spending just one hour a week with a group of pig-headed, disciplined, and determined companies that are committed to grow? Because in studies of previous recessions, 91% of companies either go stagnant, decrease, or go bankrupt during recessions versus 9% that actually grow. If you wanna be part of that 9%, that's why we've created the dojo. Visit dojo, D-O-J-O dot ultimate sales machine.com. That's dojo, D-O-J-O -O, dot ultimate sales machine.com to apply. In just one hour a week, you can transform your whole business, taking just a handful of concepts and working to master them with repetition, right? Just like my father taught, like the Dream 100 or the Best Buyer Strategy, education-based marketing, time management secrets of billionaires. We dissect the concepts, bring it back for discussion and workshop the solutions on how to implement it into your company's DNA. This is for CEOs, marketing and sales departments. We want everyone to be on the same page. And not only that, we're inviting professionals that want to use brain power over wallet power, solving old problems with new ideas. If you want to simplify and make bigger bets on fewer things, if you want to be surrounded by that group, all you have to do is apply for the dojo at dojo, D-O-J-O dot ultimate sales machine dot com. I'd love to see you there. I'm extending my sacred space to a group of like-minded individuals that all want to elevate during a time when everyone else is in panic. We're not. We're just hyper-focused. We've got a roadmap ahead of us that's worked for 250,000 businesses that's generated over $2 billion for our clients. We know it works. We just have to have the pig-headed discipline and determination to do, so why not do that in a community? I look forward to seeing you there if you're willing and able to do something great. Visit dojo.ultimatesalesmachine.com to apply.